Hi boys and girls, welcome back. So this week we're going to be doing something called One Point Perspective. One Point Perspective is a, seer, is a system that artists use, it's a tool that artists use to draw something that looks like it is in, is in three-dimensional or in perspective. And One Point Perspective is a system where things look like they are disappearing into one point. We know from drawing our landscapes before and drawing other pictures that when we see something, we see a landscape, we see that the things that are close to us, we call that area the foreground. And things we've talked about before, you know, things in the foreground look bigger. They look bigger and they are lower on the page. And then as things get further away, we call that area the middle ground, usually. Not necessarily here. The middle ground and then things that are the furthest in the back we call the background they are higher and towards the top of the paper one point perspective changes that just a little bit but it's still it uses these lines and these sort of rules to make something look three-dimensional the foreground the middle ground and the background just get a little bit different they are still the things that are closest are in the foreground but here now things as they get further away they get further away into a vanishing point so we still have the foreground, but then we have the middle ground. Maybe it's easier if I hold this one. We start with trees in the foreground and then they go towards the middle ground and then they get further and further away. And as they recede and almost disappear into the background, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. So instead of on a flat surface, like when we just look at the whole picture, like here, oh, this isn't great, but in this landscape, we can sort of see things in the foreground and then as they get further away in the background. They don't recede into one vanishing point the way that they're going to do in our drawing. But I'm going to show you today how to use one point perspective to draw using one point perspective. So I'm going to start out with a pink marker so that you can see the lines that I'm drawing, but these aren't lines that are really going to show up necessarily in your drawing because remember I said it's a system of rules and lines. These lines are to help show your brain what to do. I'm also going to draw my piece of paper with this because I want to be able to use not all the paper. So here's my piece of paper. And the first thing we're going to start off with is a horizon line. You guys remember from other drawings that a horizon line is the line that separates the sky from the ground. Or if it's in a still life, it's usually like the wall and the table. So I'm going to start with my horizon line right about in the middle of my page. And I'm going to give myself one vanishing point. It's called one point perspective because you have one vanishing point. So right in the middle of that line, I'm going to put a little dot. I'm doing this with my pencil because these are some lines that I'm going to erase later. Now, we remember that the trees in the foreground are nice and big and the trees in the background are nice and small. So how does that happen? Well, we take a line and we start towards the top edge of our paper in the corner and we're going to draw a diagonal line down to that vanishing point. We're going to go same thing from around the bottom of the paper. We're going to go up to that vanishing point. And we're going to do it on both sides of our paper. These lines are guidelines. They're going to help us understand what we're supposed to do and how we're going to draw our trees to make them move and recede back into the vanishing point. I did them with the pink marker because we're not going to want to see those lines when our drawing is over. Okay. The second thing we're going to, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our trees. Now these lines are going to show us where the top of the tree is and where the bottom of the tree is. And since this line makes these two lines make sort of a triangle that disappear, you can see they're going to start out big, they're going to get a little bit smaller. And when we make our trees, something that's really important for you to remember, anything in your picture that is straight up and down in real life is going to stay straight up and down in your picture. Sometimes when people draw this, it gets a little confusing and their eyes trick them and they make their trees lean over a little this way or lean over a little bit this way. We want you to make, I want you to make your trees go straight up and down. So we're going to start at the top of that pink line, a little bit in, and you're going to make 
your first tree. And the top of the tree is going to touch the top of the pink line, and the trunk of the tree is going to touch the bottom. Then we're going to make our next one. The next one's a little bit further away, so we know it's going to get a little bit smaller. We're going to use these lines to show us how much smaller it gets. So we're going to start at the top. We're going to make our line go, our tree go down towards the bottom, and we're going to make our tree trunk. The one that's next is even further away, so it gets a little bit smaller as it gets further away. But we still use those lines that I just drew to help me. The top of the tree touches the bottom, the top of the pink line, the bottom of the tree touches the bottom of the line. And when I get to the vanishing point, something else you guys probably remember, we've talked about things in the foreground are big and they're at the bottom, and you can see lots of details. But just like you know from looking at a picture of mountains far away, or if you're in a tall building and you're looking down on the bottom or down at the ground below, things when they get further away, they get blurrier. So your trees that are all the way by your vanishing point aren't gonna have as much detail as the ones that are right in the foreground where you can see them better. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do it on this side too. So again, I remember the top of my tree is at the top of my pink line. The bottom of my tree right there. I'm gonna sort of race through this part. If these zigzags on your trees are complicated and you're not comfortable with that, you can practice, you can make your trees, just make them like a triangle with a trunk on the bottom. That will work too, as long as the top of your tree touches the top of your line and the bottom of your tree touches the bottom of your line that recedes to the vanishing point. Your trees will still recede into the background. So let me do this last little part, these last two trees. Okay, so now I've got my trees and they recede into the background. Another couple details I might wanna add, I might wanna add a road. And we know from looking at our trees and from remembering other things we've learned in class, that when we look at something close up, it's big. And as it gets further away, it gets smaller. So just like that, we're gonna start with our road. And we can start down at the bottom of our page and draw a diagonal line up towards our vanishing point. Same thing at the bottom on the other side. That's going to be our road. That line, that dash line on our road is going to go up and disappear or vanish in our vanishing point. If I wanted to make a stream, I could do the same thing. Bigger at the beginning in the foreground, smaller as it goes away, I can make myself a stream. Then I can add some other details. Now, when I started this, I said the pink lines we weren't always going to use. Your horizon line, we don't need our horizon line to draw, to draw through our trees because our trees are in front of the horizon. So that horizon line that we made with our pink line, we only need to fill it in with, in between those trees. And that's going to separate our sky from the ground. So where we have grass, we'll have grass here, and it's going to go all the way up to that horizon line. Further in the background, if I wanted, I could add things like mountains or houses on my mountains in further in the background. Those mountains are going to start where my horizon line is. They start on the ground and they sort of grow their way up out of the ground. And they go back down to the ground. I could put some snow caps on there. Some people like to put like a sun in between. You can do that if you just want some clouds. If you just want to leave the sky blue or if you want to make a sunset, that is all up to you. But you're going to but this is how we practice. This is how we start using one point perspective. And once you understand these sort of rules, there are lots of other wonderful exciting things we can do like houses and street scenes and we will work more on those things in the weeks to come. So if you've been drawing along with me, you might be ready right now 
to maybe outline some things or start to color with pencil, colored pencils or crayons or markers. If you need to go get a piece of paper and watch again, or if you get confused, to send me a note. Um, I would love to see your finished drawings. If you color them or paint them, I would love for you to take a picture and send them to me. I would love to see them. Um, super sad that we can't be all together doing artwork, but I'm excited to be able to make these videos so that we can do some art and you can still be practicing. Hope you guys are all safe. We miss you guys. Okay, take care. See you next week. Bye.